Hi everyone, this is Olivia from the Alexandrian channel and today we're going to finish up our little mini series on dangle lines. I'm going to briefly recap what we learned in the first and the second video and then finish up with this video. And if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell notification to be notified of new videos. Thanks so much. Let's get going. The first video that I did on lines, it was about the alphabet experiment. And what I did, I have, <laughs> you'll like this, I have it on super fast speed. It only takes about, oh, a little over half a minute. It'll show you the experiment. And if you haven't seen the video, I'll leave a link to it below. In this experiment, what happens is I mark out all of the straight lines and then I go back through and I mark out all of the curved lines. And when the process is finished, what are you left with? Well, the answer is nothing at all. Nothing. Which means that the entire alphabet is only made of straight lines and curved lines. That's it. So if there's any apprehension about creating your lines, don't have them. It couldn't be simpler. So what does this mean? It means that you have the shapes of a 1 and an O. And what can you relate that to? For me, the easiest thing was feminine and masculine. The video on lines 2 is about how to identify masculine and feminine lines. So let's get to that. The feminine lines can be described as curvy, soft, wavy, and the masculine lines are just about the opposite. Hard, straight, zigzags, hard corners, definite lines. And now there is a third type of line which is actually just a combination of the feminine and masculine line where parts of each one are combined into a line. And this image is just showing you what I previously mentioned on the top part. I want to cover just briefly these other subjects. Embellishments. They are little additions that you can put anywhere that you like that add a little special spark. Below that are patterns to your far left where if you make a wide line with a blank center you can add patterns if you like or little images. The next is line width. There's a variety of line widths that you can use. And then the serif versus sans serif. So these are the things that I covered in the second video. But now I would like to go into the third part of this video which was not covered previously. Okay, here we go. Lines mistakenly give the impression of just being ordinary. Don't be misled. Lines happen to be one of the most critical parts of any design other than you, the creator. And I really do feel that way. So I guess I could say this third part of lines is really about how to express yourself by getting creative with lines. And I briefly mentioned earlier, but I'm going to go into a bit more depth now about some line types. You have solid, outline, relaxed, double, broken, I'm sure many others, but those are the ones that I'm going to cover. The solid can be very thin or very thick, but the point is it's solid, no matter what color. And then the outline, same can be said for it. Actually, the same can be said for most of them. They can be very thin or thick. Now on the outline, this is kind of one of the more important parts, is that the thicker your line is, the more room you have to create within that line for patterns or little pieces of art that you want to incorporate to tell your story. And now on the outlines, they can either be masculine, feminine, but beyond that they can be really relaxed, just carefree, which looks absolutely awesome, or it can be more formal. And another type of line which I'm really quite fond of is a double line. It's still an outline, but it's more relaxed and has an extra line or broken line 
which um, adds a little more emphasis to that area. It can't help it because it's, you know, got a double line there. And then, of course, the broken line. And that can be broken in any way with dots, dashes, slashes, diamonds. You can break it up in any way you like. And those are very interesting as well. Another fun thing to do when you're making a line is mixing masculine and feminine together in the one line. Say for example on the left side you have a straight line that's at a little bit of a diagonal and on the right side of your line it's wavy. That adds uh, quite a bit of fun interest. Really whimsical I think. And again the wider it is or the bigger it is the more room you have to create within. There's times it's not going to fit in with your design, but when you have the opportunity and it looks good to make a bigger line, it might be a good idea to try to incorporate that because it just gives you another little tiny canvas in which to create. I thought it might be really good to mention that it's almost impossible for me to describe certain aspects of this without including either an entire letter or an entire word. It is about lines, but in order to see the complete message that I guess I'm trying to get across, you kind of need to see the whole word. I hope that makes sense. Okay, continuing on. Now let's talk about applying line types. If you're creating just for fun, like I usually say, just go for it and do whatever you want. But if you're creating with a purpose, take that into consideration when you are creating your lines. You want it to kind of go along with your intended emotional impact. You know, if you're doing something that is formal, rigid, etc., like we talked about previously on line types, you might want to pick something that's more of a masculine type of line. And the opposite applies. If you're wanting something that's sweet, lovely, then you're going to want to go with more of a feminine type. But having said that, you know, your design works as a whole. When people look at it, it's the whole image, not just one part that will be taken into consideration. So, as I've previously said, you could have masculine lines that look feminine and vice versa. Now on to having fun with lines. Now when I'm creating just for fun, I kind of let my pencil do the talking. You know, I just sit down and start playing. And once you get in the habit of doing it, it's very easy to do and it's very enjoyable. But now, if you are creating with an intention, a purpose, probably what I would do is I would think about it first. Think about the concept. Think about what you want to include, what it's about, who it's for, all those different variables. And that will really help you when you start to put your pencil to paper you'll know more about what type of line you're wanting to put down. I guess if there's one big takeaway for this video, it would be to play, experiment, have fun, try different things, and that is probably the best way to find what you like, what you're comfortable with, what you feel looks good, or is the most enjoyable to do. Another really good thing that you can do is to do your own thing. Do what feels good to you, what comes from the heart, what comes from your fingertips. Give that a try and see how that goes. You might be really pleasantly surprised at how talented you are and how good something looks. I think each and every one of us are gifted in our own way and have something unique to add to our world and this is no exception. I do believe that everybody has a special spark all of their own. It kind of sounds like I'm going off into woo-woo land. Sorry about that. I just really feel strongly about this. Everybody is so unique. Try to pull some of that out from within you and put it into your creativity. While you're working with this and playing and experimenting and such, if you feel a special calling somewhere deep inside to do a certain thing, try it. That's when some of the best discoveries happen. Go with the feeling that you get creatively and just see what happens. Okay, I'll stop. That's it. 
If you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like, and hit the bell notification to be notified when I post other videos. Now I wanted to briefly let you know that I am going to continue this video over on Patreon tomorrow. I'm going to talk more about how to deconstruct some images I've created, why I did it the way I did it, etc. to hopefully give some more insight into how lines work. And I am also going to go into a little more detail about what I've talked about here and how to combine line types with creativity. So if you would like to go into more depth with me, then please come on over to Patreon. I'd love to see you there. So thanks so much and I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you got some benefit out of this video. Talk to you soon. Much love. Olivia.